straight away with the United Kingdom, a place <laughs> whose very name after this week's events is beginning to sound a bit sarcastic. <laughs> Because the UK this week voted to leave the European Union, a decision that has shaken the world, and not in a Muhammad Ali beating Sonny Liston kind of way, more in a those IKEA meatballs you love contain horse kind of way. <laughs> and, and the fallout in Britain has been swift and significant. Well, the Brexit decision is off to a bit of a rough start uh, here in London, at least. Stocks were in freefall, the pound historically weak, and the countries in the market for a new Prime Minister. That's right. David Cameron announced he would be stepping down in the wake of the vote, which should make me happy, but in this situation, it doesn't. It's like catching an ice cream cone out of the air because a child was hit by a car. <laughs> I mean, I'll eat it. I I'll eat it. But it it's tainted somehow. And, and before... Before you have any sympathy for David Cameron, you should know this whole vote was his idea in the first place. We will give the British people a referendum with a very simple in or out choice. Yes, Cameron proposed the in or out choice himself, which he normally only does when he's deciding whether to fuck a pig's mouth. <laughs> and meanwhile, meanwhile, the Brexit vote has boosted its two most vocal backers, Nigel Farage, leader of the UK Independence Party and three-time cover model for Punchable Face magazine, <laughs> And Boris Johnson, a shaved orangutan with Owen Wilson's hair. And before and after the vote, both men drove home a common theme. I believe that this Thursday can be our country's Independence Day. Let June the 23rd go down in our history as our Independence Day. OK. <laughs> Just a couple of things there. First, Britain was already independent. In fact, it's what many other countries celebrate their independence from. <laughs> and, and second, second, the sequel, the sequel to the movie they're quoting actually opened this week and features the wholesale destruction of London, which is beginning to feel pretty fucking appropriate right now. <laughs> And I'm not even sure the pro-Brexit camp had planned on winning, because the next day, they started speaking a lot more carefully about the promises that had been made. You might remember that campaign bus, which read, we send the EU £350 million a week, let's fund our National Health Service instead. Well, here's Nigel Farage the morning after the vote. The £350 million a week we send to the EU, which we will no longer send to the EU, can you guarantee that's going to go to the NHS? No, I can't, and I, and I would never have made that claim. That was one of the mistakes, I think, that, that the Leave campaign made. Oh, now you're telling us! <laughs> but it does seem that Farage will not correct factual mistakes when they're on the side of buses. I, therefore, would encourage Britain to take out bus ads reading, Nigel Farage has spent hours trying to put his own penis in his arsehole. <laughs> I presume he'll be silent about it. <laughs> And while the benefits of a Brexit may well have been exaggerated, the downsides could be all too real. Prominent figures in Scotland and Northern Ireland are advocating for leaving the UK and rejoining the EU. Meanwhile, the EU is understandably worried about other member nations making exits of their own, so it may well negotiate as hard as possible to make an example of Britain. Basically, it seems like whoever the next UK Prime Minister is going to be, whether it's Boris Johnson or a racist tea kettle, <laughs> going to be in for a rough few years, because once they invoke what's known as Article 50, they have just two years to negotiate their withdrawal and future relationship with the EU, on top of which they'll have to settle outstanding bills with the EU, uh, hammer out new trade deals with dozens of countries, sift through thousands of EU regulations and decide which ones to keep, and figure out how migration will work, and all the while, lives hang in the balance. Take this Portuguese woman who has lived in the UK for years and has built a life there. I have two daughters, one was born in Portugal, the second one was born in the UK, and they asked me this morning, Mum, what is going to happen to us? And I told them, at this point, no one knows. I don't know my future, I don't know how to explain my children what is going to happen to their future. Well, perhaps I can help you with that, because it's easy. Just tell them that they might be screwed because a pig fucker called for a vote, a bus had some bullshit written on it, and then two idiots named Nigel and Boris quoted President Bill Pullman. <laughs> They'll get it. They'll totally understand. <laughs>